Welcome back to Adobe Illustrator CC. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the Polar Grid tool. So it's actually with the Line Segment tool. If you hover over this tool here and hold down the mouse, you'll see all the hidden tools underneath. Perhaps you were working with the Arc tool last and you don't see it. So just make sure you hold down on it and then go out to the tear out bar. Once you've done that, you have access to all the hidden tools. So we're going to choose the Polar Grid tool to play around with today. And the way it works, you pretty much uh, just drag out and you can stretch it one way or the other. Um, you can get some pretty interesting sort of skewed grids here. I'm going to undo that twice. If you want to maintain proportions and not skew it, you can hold the shift key as you drag out. If you hold shift and alt, it'll essentially draw it from the center of wherever your cursor is. So if you want to do that. And if you want to reposition as you're drawing it out, you can hold down the space bar and then literally move it over. But uh, essentially what you have is kind of like a sonar kind of effect with the grid. Now you can modify this grid. If you click once, you get all the options here uh, with the tool selected. Click once in the, to the artboard. And you can see here we have five and five for the radial divisions and the concentric dividers. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out here because you can do it on the fly with hotkey. So I'm going to draw it out. And while I'm still drawing with the mouse, I'm going to hit the up arrow. And what, you'll see what will happen is you're adding more concentric circles, essentially. If I hit the down arrow, I get less concentric circles. So I can keep doing that until they disappear, or I can keep adding along. Uh, if I hit the right arrow, I divide the circles more with those uh, linear divisions. So I can make like a really cool pie chart, for example. Or I can hit the left arrow, and that will subtract. I can subtract till I get a target, or um, I can subtract till there's nothing, just the circles. So depending on what you want to create, um, you can create like a target effect. If you want just to use the circles in some way, uh, that can be interesting. I'm going to use it for circles, so I'm going to hold the Shift key. And then I'm going to release here, so I have this effect. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, select the others here and just delete them by hitting the uh, backspace or the delete key on a Mac. And then I'm going to drag this target over here to the center of the stage. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so it's easier to see. I'm going to switch to the type tool. And by default, the type tool is at the top here. I'm going to hold the mouse down on it and go to the tear out bar. And the one I actually want to look for here are, is the type on a path tool. This is the third option here. And when I click on this path, what I can then do is type. And you can see the letters are basically going around the circle. I can double click in here and highlight them and basically adjust the point system here. So I can make a bigger type along here. But what's really cool is I can go through each of these and do that. So that's one. I can then click, uh, hit the escape key to escape out, and then uh, reselect the same tool and click on another path here and repeat the same process. So you can see how you can get like a spiral of text pretty easily here. If you just simply double click on inside the text there, you can select it all and then switch and basically adjust the, uh, the point system. So maybe this one will have it at 48. And I'll double click in here or click once in here and keep typing away here until I get to the end. You'll see this red little line here uh, with a text that's sort of showing you the end point. And if I kept typing away, what will happen is uh, there's hidden text basically. It's, it's showing that there's more in here than it's available. So you can double click on it and you'll see uh, if I switch to a smaller font or point size, there's more text available there. All right. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is, let's see, um, once you have completed this, what you can do is come in here and select it with the black arrow. And you'll see when you click on the black, the type with the black arrow, you get some options here. So you can see here that there's additional text by clicking on the plus symbol. You can you can grab huh let's zoom in here. There we go. You can grab the black 
you have to zoom in to see it, but you can grab this black line and basically move it along forward or backwards. So I can grab either of these and, and basically adjust that. So I can have less over there or more and, and basically snap to it. It's kind of weird um, and a little finicky, but you have to zoom in to get that action. The other thing you can do is you can flip the text. Let's see, if we zoom out and it's in a different area here with the move tool. It's this line here at the bottom. So you, if you grab it and, and drag inwards, you're essentially flipping the text around. So you can flip it the other direction. So if you ever want to do that, select the text. So I, I'm selecting the big text on the outside here and I'm going down to this bottom line here and I'm dragging upwards and once I do that the text now goes on the inside track uh, rather than the outside. So you can have a lot of fun working with type on these paths. Well, again all you gotta do is um, make sure you have the type on a path tool selected when you click and then you can type away uh, whatever you know text you want. You can change the point size just by clicking and dragging Again, you want to select it first. I didn't select it, so double click inside. Then you can change the point size so you could have it go further and further in. So we could have a whole line of G's here. <laughs> like G whiz. All right, so um, that's having fun with the Polar Grid tool. It does have some interesting possibilities. Uh, I dare you to try it out. See you soon in the next tutorial of Adobe Illustrator CC. Cheers.